Hi everybody. Did you miss me? I missed you guys. Um, I'm doing a new soap today with a new fragrance and I have no idea how it's going to behave. Uh, did I test it? No. Um, am I going to also? No. Am I going to throw it right into about five pounds of soap? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, so the fragrance I'm using is one sent to me by one of my favorite uh, smaller fragrance companies. Uh, it's Muddy Soap Co. And it's Pink Sands is the fragrance. And if you've ever smelled uh, the Yankee Candle version of it, um, it's I'm obsessed with it right now. So when she mentioned it, I was like, oh my god, I want to try it. But it does have a lot of vanilla. Vanilla? Vanillin? Vanillin? That in it. Um, not super high, but high enough. Um, so that, that tends to go brown or black. Um, so I'm going to try to avoid that, uh, by, it's not February today, by making the base of the soap black and then we'll use some uncolored pinks to kind of make the idea. And I also wanted to get some gritty grit in there. This is pumice and some walnut shells, um, just to kind of give it some scrub. So give me a second and we'll get going. All right, so my oils are a little warmer than room temperature, but they're cooled. My lye is room temperature. My lye has sodium lactate, raw silk, and powdered sugar in it. Someone just asked me the other day how much powdered sugar I use, and I meant to reply, and then I got distracted. I use about one teaspoon per pound of oil, roughly, um, and I melt it into my lye solution. So that's the answer. Um, I hope you're watching this. Um, so let's go ahead and get this poured in. Oh, I guess I'll use my stick blender. Burp it. There's some black soap in there. I just made a bunch of black soap, so pardon the particles. I'm pouring down the shaft of the stick blender. That's just to try to help with the bubbles. Um, you know, smooth soap is something that I think all of us that have been making soap for a while kind of strive for. Uh, it's something my mentor, uh, B at Sorcery Soap, has like a freaking lock on. Like, <laughs> I don't know how she gets her soap so smooth, but it's like perfect every time. So I'm just going to kind of whirl this around for a second. I'm going to add our goat milk. And I've added a little extra goat milk than normal because if this fragrance is one that misbehaves or it speeds up, because again, I haven't tested it, a little buffer of extra liquid will give me a little bit of working time. And I kind of have an interesting design in my brain. I don't know if I'll make it, but we'll see. Um, so I'm just gonna blend this to emulsion. And again, if you do see some little black specks, that's because I just made a bunch of cats, black cats. A friend of ours is getting married and I wanted to make her and her soon-to-be wife some beautiful soaps. So she wanted black kitties and purple soap and that's what she's getting. So all right, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Just give this a wipe down. Now I don't want the scrub, so to speak, in all of the soap. I just kind of want it in the black parts. So I'm going to go ahead and divide out the rest of this to be pinks. And um, this is my overflow. This, this mold's a little smaller than what I measured these batches out for. So I wanted to have my overflow guys ready to roll, but I'll put them over there for right now. Put you here. How much do you hold? About a thousand. That'll do. And again, I'm trying to be good. And I'm gonna break the fall of this onto the spatula. All right. And now get one more of those. What's in you? I need to like be better with my dishes. I don't know what. What is shaking with my dishwasher, but it's being a little crabby. All right. Okay. So now let's add the black to the main one. This is a combination of activated charcoal and some black oxide. 
I, I, I have like one or two soaps that I find I get really, really black just with activated charcoal, but I feel like some fragrances make it more green and or gray and it just doesn't look really deep and I wanted this to be a deep black color and if you watch my other video from the same release sorry did that bounce too much nope um I talked about how I was pretty sure that that bar of soap would come out kind of grayish instead of black and I was right um I was wearing these same these same armbands here my same little farmer's defense sleeves um so it's just it's just frustrating black can be a tricky color sometimes so we're gonna go ahead and add our little grit in kind of blend that till it's got a decent consistency all right Okay, that's in there. Let's get you guys blended. Right, um, let's do the darker one here. Darker pink. This is Material Girl from Nurture Soap, which is one of their Epic Color um, collection soaps. So it's a neon with their mica, so it's a blend. It's not just a pure mica. Uh, they are my favorite to use. Um, neon soap colorants tend to be uh, clumpy, I guess is the word to say, when you use them. So you use them, you get like little plops of neon color places that you don't necessarily want plops of neon color. Um, so I like that these are smooth in their entirety. I don't have to really work that hard to keep them smooth. Um, this is Material Girl um some td and a dash of what are you i think it's the yellow orange just to kind of make it a little bit more corally so i'm going to add the majority of the fragrance to the black and to the darker pink and i'm not going to add any fragrance to this light pink because it's very light and i am very much hoping that this colorant doesn't or this fragrance doesn't travel so I guess we will see how lucky I am. All right, are you completely, I feel like you're not really all the way blended here. Let's just give you a little more of a swirl. Same with you, I can like see. Let me grab another spatula. This one's a little too, a little too short for what I'm asking it to do. I always, talk about you know making sure that you mix everything thoroughly I I can be real prone to having issues with um, false not false trace um, what's it called um, oh words words are hard today sorry um, it's like where you don't mix everything to full emulsion and you get like that little bit of weird like internal ash and I've been seeing that in my work lately, and I think it's because I'm just being hasty. My recipe does tend to speed up because it's got just, I mean, so much shea butter in it uh, and cocoa butter. And that's not helpful <laughs> if you want a really fluid soap. So I, uh, I tend to kind of get a little gun shy about like, oh, it's mixed, let's go. And I'm talking about it to remind myself to take time because just because I've been making soap for more than two minutes doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. Especially when it comes to haste. And like, I don't know if someone's going to be like, haste makes waste. It sure does. All right. No, this is all cockeyed. Ugh. Is that straight? And it's straightish. All right. So now I've got everybody in their respective containers and the color I want. Let's set up my mold so it hopefully does what I want it to do. And this mold is uh, from my good friends, Winston and Walter is the name of the company. July is her name. She is amazing. Um, if you 
have not used their stuff yet, you are missing out. They make beautiful molds. And she was kind enough to send these to me. And they're nice star molds. They're good to use for kind of a mid-size soap, which I appreciate. So we're gonna use a handy dandy wadded up towel there. Is that enough? Eh, we'll see. All right, let's add fragrance and see what this does. I mean, it smells just like Pink Sands, the candle. So that's, that's a great start. I just really hope it behaves and doesn't turn everything like brown chicken, brown cow, like tobacco vanilla does. And if you have ever used tobacco vanilla, you know what I'm talking about. Because tobacco vanilla is like just the most delicious fragrance. It turns so brown. <laughs> and it turns its friends brown. It doesn't, it's not content to stay in its, uh, in its little area. It'll, it'll kind of migrate through the entirety of the soap, which is very frustrating when you didn't plan for that. Um, so far it's behaving really well. So it seems to be reducing the trace, which is nice. When I say reducing the trace, my soap was trying to turn back into like, you know, a hard solid. So going from, I don't know, like from, this is where I don't cook. So it kind of screws me up here. So I want to be like, it looks like pudding, but it doesn't really look like pudding. And like, I actually have never made pudding. So I guess I shouldn't be talking about it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a cook. That's, that's Mr. Cheeky's job. All right. So I've got like just the babyest bit. I know I said I wasn't going to add anything to it, but I'm going to do it. Just add a little, just a little. If anything to kind of help it smooth out a little bit more. All right. So that's in there give you another mix. And so far it's behaving decently. I don't see any rising. It doesn't seem to be speeding up. These are all things that I'm <laughs> relieved to see. And I want to kind of do kind of a baby ombre. So we'll start off with just the black. And I have to be careful because I won't use all of this soap. Let me pour off some into here. Because there isn't enough soap to fill that. What I will afraid of happening is of me trying to make this ombre and then having no room for the top of it because if I use everything that's in there, it's going to overfill this. So let's add just a touch of the pink. And pour that in. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my donkey is like alerting. And I don't know why. That's really funny. His name is Henry. He's a good boy. We're going to add in some more pink. Why are you yelling, Henry? I don't see any reason for him to be yelling. He's probably just talking to his, his wives. All right. adding quite a bit more pink in, even though it kind of jumps the ombre shark because I want to start to see it a little bit more. And I don't always think about how tricky that can be when you go from dark to a light color. But you can start to see it now, good. <laughs> 